Ever seen a driver blow in the bag? It's getting to be a far more familiar sight than it used to be. Over 2,000 drivers are breathalyzed every week. Look at this chap. Had a marvelous time. Didn't think for one second. Now I'm not fit to drive. Then he makes a stupid mistake. Didn't think he'd ever be stopped and have to blow in the bag. We didn't consider himself a criminal. We'd only had a couple of drinks. But he'll lose his license. And unfortunately, his wife can't drive. But he was one of the lucky ones. Last December, a quarter of all the drivers killed were known to be over the limit. Last year, there were nearly 40,000 convictions. Make sure you're not added to this year's total. Drinking and driving. It's just not worth it. When a drunken driver gets his license back... How much? His insurance can often double. What, for third party? Disqualified. Drinking and driving. He'll find it expensive wherever he goes. It's more than I paid for the motor. And the real joke is, although he's allowed to drive... It's the best thing to do, pal. Can he afford to? I'll do you a favour. I'll buy the motor off you. <laughs> Most of us reckon we can handle our motors after a few pints. <laughs> Take it easy and you don't attract the law. But what if some stupid git does this? Or this? Or this? Those few pints will just cost you your license. <laughs> so is the stupid git now. Right, I'm off then. Forget the car when you go for a drink, and you can also forget the well-meant advice. Are you sure you're okay to drive? Forget the self-denial. No, thanks, mate. I'm driving. You can even forget being a free taxi service. Well, just a favour. Give us a lift, mate. But most important, you can forget this. So if you really want to enjoy a drink, remember, when you fancy a jar, forget the car. Before you say you'll never get hurt. Well, every single day, hundreds of people say it can't happen to me, but it does. And the difference between an ugly smash-up and just a nasty shake-up could be simply the seatbelt habit. So before any of us say it can't happen to me, snap into that seatbelt habit. You know it makes sense. If you imagine this is your car, then this is a motorcycle. Now, when you drive up to a main road, it's easy to see other cars. But because a motorcycle is a third of the width of a car, he's very hard to see. But he's dead easy to hurt. <laughs> Nasty. And that's why, at junctions, I'm asking you to give a second thought for bikes. Stop. Think once for cars, hold it, then think again for bikes. If you want to avoid this, think once, think twice, think bike. Diamonds are for danger. The diamond sign means a dangerous load. Look out for the diamond signs. They all mean danger. If there's an accident, when you see the diamond sign, keep away. Go to the nearest phone and dial 999. There might be an explosion or fumes that could kill you. Diamonds 
are for danger. Keep away. That's the key. This is my dad. That's my sister. This is my mum and my mum. She always waits there. She worries when we're not all home. Mum and Dad worry when I am. Mind you don't burn yourself. Dry yourself properly. You'll ruin your eyes. And every Saturday morning when me and Mum go shopping, my nan always tells me to look out for the traffic. Me! It's Mum she should be telling. When she wants to get to the shop opposite, she just takes off. She doesn't bother with the crossing. We've been told at school not to go between parked cars, but to use the crossings. And my mum says that's quite right when you're young. At home there's all that sit up and eat up, otherwise you won't grow up to be big and strong and healthy. And outside, where there are cars and lorries and buses wagging past, my mum should be wearing L paints crossing the road. Good job she doesn't drive. My dad does, and he's very careful, but he doesn't always practice what he preaches. Me and him had been up in the park Sunday morning. Then he remembered we hadn't bought the car. So I started walking to the subway, and he tells me to make us late for our dinner. It's very funny how grown-ups can always be right, even when they're wrong. Now, if anybody had tried that when he'd been driving, he'd have done his nut. The best, though, was when I was with Mum. Me and her were on our way home after getting me more shoes. Anyway, we have to cross the road. And she didn't even see the car coming. She was about to tell the driver what she thought about him, and he was out the car to do the same. And you know who he was? My dad! In our new car. We could have all finished up as mincemeat. And you tell me how they would have explained that to my nan. Not so long ago, people with traffic problems usually found a quick answer. But today's drivers need to keep a cooler head. Do you leave enough space when following other vehicles? And if another car fills the gap, do you drop back? If you don't, this sort of thing can happen. Remember, keep your distance. Love, as if I haven't got enough to do. All these blooming doors to cope with. Like getting to the trip point Charlie around these corridors. You want to wedge them open, Ada? Hang a bit. I've got one here, haven't I? There you go. Oh, Terry, you are a good boy. That's better. I'll remember you in my will. Shut up. The old Ada's cracking on about them fire doors again. They ought to leave them open all the time. Hey, stupid, isn't it? Hey, you coming in? If there should be a fire where you work, the quickest way to make it spread is to wedge open a fire door. Fire doors prevent fire spreading, and they're a barrier against suffocating fumes and smoke, giving you enough time to escape to safety. Never wedge open a fire door, never lock them shut. Fire doors can save lives, yours maybe. You know, each of those cars carries a whole family. Yes, even him. He's probably got a wife and kids, depending on his arriving home safely. What are his chances? That much less if he doesn't snap into his seatbelt. There can be some pretty frightening results from accidents where people don't wear their seatbelts, and they don't have to be fatal. After all, what's a family with mum or dad laid up in hospital? I know that if you wear a seatbelt, you reduce your chances of being killed or seriously injured by half. So what I'm getting at is this. 
If you won't belt up for yourselves, then please do it for them, because your seatbelt is their security. And I'm going to be around for quite a while punching that message across. Right, here's my first problem. The driver who takes all the trouble in the world to put a seatbelt on for a long drive along the motorway, but doesn't bother for just popping round the corner, because it's that popping round the corner drive that's the most dangerous, just when you think it's not worth belting up. Think about this one. Over 60% of all traffic accidents happen in built-up areas. So let's get into that seatbelt habit. And let's make it automatic, as automatic as closing the car door. After all, you wouldn't drive off without hearing this, would you? The clunk of the car door closing. Right, let's add another sound. The click of a seatbelt being fastened. Clunk, click. That makes sound sense, doesn't it? Never clunk without you click. You know, we could become a nation of clunk clickers. Is it all worth it? Well, if it's not for you, surely it is for them. Remember, this seatbelt is their security. See you, clunk clicker.